Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hello if you are new. My name is Jess and today I'm going to be walking you through my Travel Hub Notion template, which is my newest template that I have built purely because we are going on a trip soon and I needed to plan it. So this one is very much built around specific needs and the needs that we had. And I think that they will be the needs that everyone would have for planning a trip, especially quite a big trip or a trip with multiple destinations where you need to budget, where you want to plan certain certain activities, certain food places you want to go to, all that sort of thing. So we're going to jump straight into it and I'm going to walk you through how it works and all the pages. So here is the main dashboard. It looks very simple at first glance, but once you get into the actual trips themselves, that's where all the detail is. So the first page is trips. Funnily enough, there are two in here. I've got a past trip and an upcoming trip, so you can see both. You can obviously go to one of the different views to see these specifically, or you can view them by all. I also have a countries page and a cities page, so you can track the different countries that you've visited and the countries that you really want to visit, so the ones on your bucket list. I haven't input every single country into this, so I'm sorry if that's what you want. It's not here, I'm just gonna say that straight away. We've sort of categorized it by continent, I think the cities get pulled into the country itself as well and you can check whether you've visited it or not. So again we have different views, you can view by visited or not, you can view your bucket list or you can view it in a list view which some people prefer from the gallery views. And also if you've had any trips to these countries they will pull up here as well. So I will just open one as an example. So when you go into a country you can fill in all the different details. So obviously check when you visited it or check if it's on your bucket list and you want to visit it. And then you can fill in a whole bunch of other information. So the language is spoken, currency and the capital. Any upcoming trips will automatically pull into here and any past trips will also pull into here. So the only section you need to fill out is the general section. I have just popped into the cities page and this is exactly the same as the countries page. It's built the same way. It has all the same views. So those two are super simple. One page that I find quite fun is the bucket list page. So this is where you can track the countries you've been to and the cities you've been to and sort of how far along your bucket list you are. We have obviously the tracking here and there is a little progress bar where you can see how you're doing in terms of checking off your bucket list. We have the countries that are on your bucket list that you still want to go to so once you've been to one and you click visited visited it it will move over from that view into the visited tab instead and the same thing with the cities just click when you visited it and this will automatically update the countries and cities visited progress bar one other page i built that has nothing in it at present is a memory section so you can attach memories to your trips your cities your countries that you can go back and view later and it's kind of just like an online photo album or journal however you would prefer to use it but just a way to keep track of very special memories that happened on the trip so I've just gone in to create a memory and this template will pop up straight away where you can attach it to a trip and then select the date specifically of that memory rather than the trip dates because that will already be associated and then you can add any notes that you wish and then add an image and then any other further notes that you want to. And then the only other page on this main section is what to pack and this will pull into the trips. So here you'll see this is kind of the main database and it's tidied up within the trips itself so I won't go into too much detail here but I have included a whole lot of items and you can check whether person one or person two has it packed in these little check boxes. There's a laundry box so you can check if it needs washing so basically it's not ready the section and whereabouts it is so obviously this is all suitcase but some things will be in a makeup bag a toiletries bag you might have a document sleeve that sort of stuff so you can track where these items are as well so now for the fun part we can go into our Italy trip and I can show you all of the details really of this template one thing to note is if you create a new trip everything you see in the Italy trip will be generated for a new trip it just it does take a little bit of time to load because there are a lot of pages within the, a new trip page. So we'll go into Italy. You can select the status whether it's upcoming or past and then it will give you a countdown for how many days until this trip or how many days since this trip depending on your departure date and obviously you select your departure and return dates. This will give you this little nice view here that sort of shows you when you fly out when you return and it'll give you a days and nights as well which I find really helpful especially when booking accommodation because sometimes that can get a little bit confusing 
confusing with how many days you're somewhere and how many nights. Bring in the cities from the cities page and attach them as well as the countries. So I've just scrolled down. There is a summary which will bring in your budget for you. You will set your budget in the budget page when we get there. It will automatically pull in what you've spent so far and how much money you have left according to your budget, which I think is really crucial to see at a glance just there. There is the itinerary, which will automatically pull in with, I think, seven days on the template. So you just add or delete as many as you need. And then also you can click into a specific day and this also has its own template. So like I said, there is quite a lot of detail in here. So you can create a daily schedule if you wish. I, for my trip, have just been putting in anything that is specifically booked at a set time just to make sure I don't forget it. The activities books will automatically pull in from the activities page as will all of these details down here which you'll see how that works soon and the expenses do the same thing. And then I also have another side view of the itinerary down here just so you can see at a glance what is coming up on other days. So we've just gone back to the trip. There is also a planning view. So if you'd rather see it in a table, you can do that as well. So you just set the date for each day, attach the city that is associated with it. So for this one, it would be Rome and any accommodation, activities, food and drink that you'll create in these pages soon. All of this will make sense once you've sort of seen the whole video, I'm hoping. There is a very simple to-do list down here where you can just check off when it's done and it will move to complete. This is just for very basic things you don't want to forget, like booking your flights, booking your travel insurance. It's just right there at a glance for you. And then additionally to this itinerary, I've just jumped ahead to April 2025. You can see that it pulls into the calendar view as well, if that's also easier for you to read. So now there's an additional a dashboard that all of this detail is sort of built within. So we'll go through those now. Transportation page, obviously very self-explanatory. You can plan your transportation here. So flights, trains, rental cars, buses, anything. I've set up some templates for, for those four and they have these cover images attached so it's quite clear what's for what. So when you create a new one, let's just say travel for now. When you click into it, you just select the template that you want to use and that will pull in the icon for you so it's very clear and the cover, Im cover image. Anything that's booked that you've selected in the status view will show up on this top view so that you know exactly what's coming up and it's sorted by date. And it is now, because I just had to fix that, sorted by date so that you can see everything in chronological order. So I've now jumped into the activities and attractions page. Also, it's good to know in advance certain things that you need to book before you get there. So there is a booking section where you can select must book in advance or no booking required. So you can keep track of important details like that. I've sort of done it so that you can track what it is, your priority on whether you want to see it or not. I mean, how high priority it is, I guess. The status, so whether you're still looking into it or it's already booked. The category of the activity, the city it's in, the country it's in, and the itinerary here is how it will pull into that first itinerary view we looked at on the main page. So when you've booked an item in, just like select the day that you're going to be doing it on and it will pop into the itinerary. The alternative way of doing that is in the itinerary, going to that day and pulling the activity in that way. You can do it either way. You can input the opening hours because that is very important to know and also the cost because when you're deciding what you want to do, I'm sure the cost is going to play a big factor. And there is a booked view and this is going to be ordered by your itinerary days. There is a what to do which is just sort of everything in the list and then there's a by city view which is just a board view of everything but organized by city. Here we have a food and drink page which might seem a bit random but there are sometimes specific places that you really want to go visit. I've created a page here for like your favorite places to go and it works the exact same way as the activities page. Accommodation. This one is super useful for tracking when you're investigating accommodation, but again, once it's booked in and you just need to know where you're going to be staying. So it has the same, I don't have an example in here, but it's the same thing with the status. You can select whether you're still investigating or it's booked, select the city that it's in, select the itinerary day, and then do your check-in and check-out date. And this will pull in, we'll just move to the side so you can see. Let's just say it's an Airbnb. It's going to be in Tuscany. Itinerary is day one. 
check-in is, I can't remember the dates of our trip, but we'll just say June 17th to June 20th. Booking platform, Airbnb, you can put the booking details, etc. Switch this to booked. And then on the book view, it will show you your check-in and check-out dates and how many days and nights that you are staying for in this little view here. And then when you set a cover image, that will fill in this blank section as well. This one is my favorite page, I think, in terms of planning a trip, budget and expenses. So I've categorized them into seven different sections. You can obviously create more if you need. This is just the ones that I found the most useful. And when you first create a trip, I would recommend going to the list, setting your budget for each item. And then during your progress of organizing your trip and booking things, you adjust the expenses in this little table down below. So in this table here, I've added the expenses that we already know about. So for example, flights from Wellington to Rome, the cost of them, what the category is and the itinerary day. Obviously some of these things are paid in advance, but I've been setting it in terms of the day that it's happening. So if it's an activity, the day that the activity is happening on for accommodation it's the day of check-in for travel it's the day of travels so this is the, how it organizes how much is remaining it's based off these expenses and when they're categorized into the right section so the way that I've also been tracking it is just selecting here when it's paid from this little checkbox just so that you personally know because you might have it in here as a cost and that it's spent but you haven't actually paid for it so you just need to remember to check that little box I like having it in this visual view once I've set the budget. So it's very clear how much money is allocated to each category, how much you've spent and how much is left. The list view of course is good because it gives you a sum at the bottom. So you know your total budget, your total spending so far and your total remaining. And these are the numbers that also pull in to that summary on the first page of your trip. So as a reminder, that's just this little section here. The summary also, if you click into it, does pull in everything. So it pulls in your transport that is booked, your booked accommodation, your food and drink that you've visited, your activities that you've booked, and it pulls in your budget that has been paid for. And this is whether you've checked it off or not. So that's a good overview after the trip where you can see everything in one place, which I really like. The last page is the packing list, which I mentioned in the main overall travel hub page. This is how it's laid out to make it a little bit more clear and easy to understand, at least for my brain. So I've organized everything into this section. So documents, essentials, electronics are all up the top, and then you can adjust where it is in your packing. So whether it's in a suitcase, document sleeve, handbag, whatever. There is clothing broken down into sections as well, and I've also given them sort of their own section title. So obviously basics, shoes, accessories, cold weather, beach wear, etc. And then the last one is first aid, toiletries and makeup and skincare. So of course, add anything to your packing list that you need, delete anything in here that doesn't make sense for you, customize it as much as you need. Anything you do on here will reflect back into the main packing page. So don't delete that page or this page will be broken. So there we go. That's how everything works in my travel hub. I really hope that this video was helpful to help explain it. I've left a whole lot of italicized comments throughout the template as well that will also help with how it works in case that makes more sense than me talking it through in this video. But as I said, I built this personally for our own trip and it had everything we need so far for what we were planning. So I'm hoping it will be really useful for you guys as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Notion template walkthroughs like this from me. If you do want to get this template for yourself, it is now on my Etsy page along with all of my other Notion templates. So go check that out and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.